Well, good evening. Good to see you here tonight. Hope you've had a good day. This is the place to be. We're so glad you're here tonight. Let's all stand, if you will, and we'll begin with the song, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Page 581, 581 in your hymn book. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to seated. Amen. Boy, it's good to see you tonight. And uh, maybe during the message, we'll have some showers of blessings outside and water the grass and grow the trees and all that good stuff. And, and that'd be a, that'd be a wonderful thing. I want you to be in special prayer, um, for the Fink's granddaughter and, uh, uh, Bill and Evelyn Fink's granddaughter named Hope. Uh, she had a PET scan, uh, searching for cancer and the results are not good. Uh, at this time, tumors are growing again. Uh, they're changing your chemo, and that's uh, so we're praying that that will work. So, Evelyn, we're praying with you all about that. Brother Bill's back there uh, with the live stream, and thank you so much for serving. And um, so, please pray for hope. Add her to your prayer list, if you will. And and then, uh, please pray for our Supreme Court. Pray for our senators, our congressmen. Um, uh, a lot of decisions are happening these days uh, that will affect the future. And so please pray that God's will be done and pray that God's protection will be upon each and every one. Um, you know, uh, God's in control, God's in charge, and people might think that, that they're in charge, that man is in charge. That's not the case. Uh, God's ultimately the one that each of us stands before and answers to, and if necessary, he will step in and change things. And uh, uh, just, he's done it many, many times in the word of God, and I know he's able to do it again. So uh, if you will pray, and, and thank you so much. Pastor Jim, if you'll come, please, and go over these other announcements here. Yes, sir. Well, if no one's told you they love you today, I love you, the Lord loves you, and you're really loved. And it's real. It's not fake. Amen. God's love is so real. And we ought to be sharing his love to people. But we're going to pray for some folks this evening here. Uh, president, government officials. Pray for the peace of Israel. Missionaries. Jane Blevins. Florida Hospital. You know, we've had the hardest time 
getting with Miss Blevins. I made three trips over there and I hadn't seen her yet. And the preacher was over there and he didn't get to see her either. So I guess tomorrow I will go see her and maybe she'll be sitting down. She had surgery on her uh, hip. hip was broken. Anyway, uh, Dorothy Moore also, oh, hip service surgery Monday. You know, she hadn't been able to come for a long time. I visited her at home, lives way out there near 92. Uh, CEF five day clubs next week. Bowder's acquaintance, Carol, needs kidney transplant. Cliff Bowder, he's going to have esophagus surgery on Tuesday. And uh, I want you to remember this young man, 22 years old. You heard about the wreck out here on the highway yesterday morning. Had uh, 472 on back, was just closed down from about 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the morning. Well, I didn't know him, but uh, come to find out, uh, he is a cheerleader and going to graduate and be a Navy pilot. But he was riding a motorcycle and running the back of that boat trailer and killed him. Uh, and uh, he cheers for uh, FSU in Orlando. And my granddaughter uh, and a friend had lunch with him the day before he died. So 22 years old, gone. You know them motorcycles are dangerous. That's what I heard all my life. Your Uncle Bill Floyd, he almost got killed on one of them big Harleys. So I always rode a sport bike. I didn't ride no Harley. So anyway, uh, Ken Oshida to Tokyo, uh, Kelman's to England on the backside, or on my backside, I, I got it turned over. Psalm 5-2, hearken unto me, under, under the voice of my cry, my King, my God, for thee will I pray. Continue in prayer, Carrie Buffum, Mark Fleming, Jane Caldwell, Hope's dad, Bruce Watson, uh, Gwen Sullivan's brother, David, Margie Long's sister, Dot, missionary Pam Nolan, Carpinko's daughter-in-law, Pam, David Jacobs' mom, May, uh, Merle Scrimmager had his service yesterday. Kathy Mills and Donna Stewart, boy, they've been sick since last September with this COVID in their lungs. Betty Buffum's brother, Harold, Fink's granddaughter, Hope, Crow family, uh, oh, Shanice's mom, Stacy, Leela Jacobs' son, Ryan, Eunice Fossil's brother, Bruce, Jim Shefford Crawford, Beverly Router, and on the back, pray for our teachers and leaders. And so we have a blessing to have Brother Matt Williamson comes on Thursday night. He works at another church over in Eustis. So, thank you for coming. Yes, sir. It's a blessing to be here. Let's go ahead and pray. We just, Lord, we come before you this evening and just ask that uh, you put your hands especially on the service, Lord, this evening, the pastor as he brings a message, but on each of us, Lord, that we'd be able to get from your word the things that you'd have for us. Lord, there's a lot of folks on the prayer list, uh, many that many with cancer, other diseases. I just ask, Lord, that you'd be with those, those that are stuck at home, can't get out. Lord, we got a, a lot of folks um, facing <coughs> problems this year, Lord, and last year that they haven't faced before. I just ask you to give us strength uh, to get through them, to have a good testimony in all that we say and do, Lord, that the things uh, we're going through, that we'd be able to be a good witness, Lord, have a great testimony to the people around us as they see us going through things that would make them suffer and make them afraid. Just ask you, give us strength, Lord. Um, help us to have the, the grace and the wisdom to lean on you through each of these. Ask you be with those that are deployed, especially last, ask, Lord, you be with our government, the folks in the, in the Supreme Court and others, Lord, that they would uh, do things that are right, Amen. that they would not be intimidated by 
the many, Lord, that are that seem now to just call evil good and call good evil. I'll just ask you to help them to do what's right because it's right. And just ask, Lord, for this evening that you just put your hands on everything we do here, Lord. Uh, keep the devil out of here and just Amen. ask you to uh, bless each one for their faithfulness in coming out. We ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Before we sing this song, I do want to ask you to pray for the young people, the children in the back. Uh, they're still meeting throughout the summer, and they're preparing for a new patch play in August. It's Patch Goes to the Jungle, and it's one of the very earliest uh, patch uh, CDs and plays that they did. You'll get to beat Banana Man later this summer, okay? So if you pray for them, they're, they're rehearsing, they're learning the songs, they're learning their parts. And it's a lot of work for them that God will bless that. Let's all stand again, if you will. 541, the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Shake hands with one another, if you will, though, as they play through a verse. <coughs> That's one of those very verses they put in there, but yes, I should be able to jump on it. When did you, uh, when did you confess Why don't you start it now? You know, uh, when you get done. And, uh, did you record it? No. my strength the joy of the lord is my strength the joy of the lord is my strength the joy of the lord is my strength amen you may be seated i'm going to ask you a quiz some quiz questions here you may be seated Listen to these list of songs and tell me if you've heard of them before, okay, in your mind. The old account was settled long ago. How many of you heard that before? Yes, sir. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Yes, sir. Christ liveth in me. Yes, sir. The next time he comes. Yes. Bringing in the sheaves. Yes, Set my soul afire, Lord. Amen. For me to live is Christ. Amen. Throw out the lifeline. Is your all on the altar? All, amen. A great salvation song, Christ receiveth sinful men. Amen. We have an anchor. Yeah. I just keep trusting my Lord. Yeah. I have a home beyond the river. Mm. I've got a mansion over the amen. hilltop. Yeah. My sins are gone. Yeah. Just over in the glory land. Amen. Look and live. Yeah. Oh, it is wonderful to be a Christian. I mean, you've heard that before. Yeah. Singing I go along life's road. My sins are blotted out, stepping in the light. Springs of living water. When I see the blood, rejoice in the Lord. Every one of those songs I just listed to you are not in our hymn book. None of them. I have found over 50 or 60 songs in a new hymn book and there's even probably more that we're going to be purchasing. Amen. It's called Bible Truth Hymns. 
Byron Fox com uh, compiled it together, and many of you remember Byron Fox leading the singing for us during the tent revival. It is a good Baptist hymnal. Amen. It's got songs like I just listed for you here, and even more, and I'm so excited I can't wait to get it. <laughs> when I pick songs out on Sundays to match up what we're doing for the choir, I'm kind of limited with our hymn book right now. It's, it's adequate, but it's not the best. And so we're going to purchase a new hymn book. We've already made that decision. We're going to put them in the pews here, or the seats here, and uh, get them for the choir. And we're trying to do that by the first week or two in July. But if you would like to help with the cost of that, we're not taking necessarily a special offering, but on your offering envelopes, there's a place there where you can put uh, for special things and, and get gifts to special needs. So if you want to write on there hymn books, and give to that and drop it in with your regular offering, you can do that any time now because we're going to get the books anyways, but if you want to help uh, with that and the cost of it, it'd be great. It, it, it'll be a wonderful time. We're, we're getting a, a, a new song leader and choir director uh, and, and, that, that, and Brother Lyle, and that's exciting that that's coming, and uh, it'll be nice to have a new hymn book with a lot, lot more songs that we're used to hearing and singing, and I'm excited about that. David. Yeah, Brother Les mentioned that to me a few weeks ago, and I said, yes, sir, that's been on my heart. That's been on my heart, and so we, we really we really got serious about it and, and examined different ones, and I contacted Lyle Fleming, and I asked him, uh, since you're the one that will be leading congregational uh, and things, what do you think about it? And uh, I sent him the, the, the list of the songs, the digital list of all the songs and all that kind of thing. He went through it. He shot me a text back on, on my phone. He says, I can't wait. That's an awesome book and uh, great songs. So, uh, so he's on board and, and I talked with the finance committee. I talked with the deacons and uh, all of them are on board. Uh, we would like you to get on board. You could, you could take care of 10 hymn books for 130 bucks. 10 hymn books for 130 bucks. Um, uh, we need uh, 500, in order to cover uh, the seats and the, um, I factored it up, we've got 14 rows, eight in, a, eight in a row, six sections, do the math, um, uh, six and, and then about 70 for, for the choir loft. Um, it's uh, 520, 560, something like that, hymn books that, that we need to have. And that'll give us just a few extras um, uh, just, just to have in case someone gets artistic uh, on a hymn book. That happens sometimes. But we're going to put six hymn books in the pews. There's eight seats. We're going to put six hymn books in. The other two places, we're going to put a Bible, a pew Bible. In, in their hardback pew Bible. And so that uh, so when someone comes in and, and maybe they don't have a Bible of their own and, and things, they can reach up there and, and they can find it and follow along. And, and that's, a, that's a great thing. We did this in West Virginia uh, after a while pastoring up there. And uh, uh, we put pew Bibles in. And boy, that was, people loved that. Also, I'm going to tell people, and you can tell them too that uh, if they don't have a Bible of their own at home, they just don't have a Bible. We'll tell them from time to time, not every Sunday, but we'll tell them that they can take that pew Bible and we'll replace it. And we want everyone to have a copy of the Word of God. And uh, uh, so, so that's, uh, we're excited about this and looking forward to it. And, and uh, our purpose is to get the good news of the gospel around the world, all the way to Moldova even, all the way to Moldova. Daniel Ford uh, is doing a great work for God uh, on the mission field. And he sent us a video, about a six-minute video. And uh, gentlemen, uh, ladies, do you all have that back there in the video booth? All right, go ahead, if you will, and, and put that on for us. Greetings, everyone. This is Pastor Daniel Ford, missionary to the country of Moldova, coming to you live today, June the 7th, 2022, with an update of all the things that are happening here in Moldova. And I'm very excited for the place where I'm standing today. This is our brand new, beautiful auditorium that the Lord has helped us uh, be able to open just this past Sunday for the very first time. And so this past Sunday, we had around 80 people uh, that came into our auditorium. That was with 
a few guests that were invited to come and be a part of music and a guest speaker that came uh, this past Sunday to be with us uh, for this special service. And so we're just thrilled and excited uh, to let you all know about how God has provided and worked again uh, in mighty ways for us here in Moldova. Uh, we moved into this building about 10 years ago. And in fact, we were upstairs in that room right there, uh, which is a monthly functional room and always was designed to be that way. It'll continue to be used for a fellowship hall, for youth meetings, for larger uh, children's meetings, for vacation Bible school and many other things. But that's where we've been meeting uh, we moved into there in 2012, and then we just one by one finished all the rooms down the hallway uh, until we finally got here uh, to this auditorium, which we were able to finish and move into this past Sunday. In addition to the great opening that we had here at the service, uh, we want to thank the Lord that we had two baptisms this Sunday. Uh, the first one was my son Josiah, uh, who was excited uh, to follow the Lord in believer's baptism and give his life to the Lord uh, in front and, and witness that in front of uh, our church family. And then another one was Alexandra, who is a 19-year-old uh, young lady uh, saved from a Russian Orthodox family. And uh, she grew up not understanding the gospel, not knowing the Lord at all. And earlier this year, I uh, started coming to our programs and services and uh, I had the privilege to lead her to the Lord uh, after a Sunday morning service earlier this spring. And she was thrilled and excited uh, to come and be baptized uh, this past Sunday uh, and even had some of her relatives who came here to see that. So God's word is still uh, having fruit here in the country of Moldova and we're excited uh, for all the things that God is doing. We also had a baby dedication this Sunday, uh, which for a small church like ours is an exciting thing. And actually it was our fourth baby dedication uh, this year. And so we thank the Lord uh, for God, how, how God is adding new families, young families, families uh, who the Lord is blessing with little ones. And so we're just very thankful uh, that our church is growing. Uh, and we certainly have been through some difficult times uh, through the pandemic and coming out of that. Uh, and into the things that have been going on uh, here in Eastern Europe uh, this year. Uh, but just want to take a moment and thank many of you who prayed with us and given towards this project. Uh, in just a moment, I'll take you around and show you a little more of the auditorium. Uh, but I also want to ask you to please keep praying for the ministries that we are doing here, uh, including youth and children, adult discipleship, men's meetings, ladies' meetings, uh, and then... Um, this summer, we have some things planned in August. We're planning a day camp, like a vacation Bible school, and we'd ask you to be praying about that. Uh, we just had a youth outing yesterday and uh, working towards uh, building a youth here uh, among the students of the, uh, and teenagers uh, here in the city of Hinchest. And so some of those ministries had been cut back during pandemic time. So pray with us as we seek to ramp those up now this summer and then especially towards the fall, uh, looking for new ways to reach students uh, whether it be through basketball ministry again or some other youth work, uh, be praying with us about that as we look for uh, open doors to be able to uh, continue to make disciples and to share the gospel uh, both with students and with adults alike. And then the other thing I'd ask you to pray for is outreach to uh, Ukrainians. Uh, that ministry has kind of had a lot of intensive work uh, in the early part of the year, February, March, April, and May. And has started to slow down some in, in as far as directly uh, helping refugees. Early on, we had many coming through, transitioning through, staying in Christian camps and homes and different things. And we were helping them here. And um, we're still doing some of that with clothes donations and food and other essential items. Uh, but we've also transitioned to a time now where we begin sending uh, when, when we've had funds given to us available uh, to send aid uh, in van loads of food and essential items all the way into the Ukraine. And so that seems to be the direction of where helping the Ukrainian refugees is headed right now. If any of you would like to be a part of that, uh, just get in touch with us and we'll, we'll make sure you can uh, have a part in that ministry. And there's just so many people here that need to hear the gospel, whether they be Moldovans, Ukrainians, Russians. Uh, this war is affecting a lot of people here. Uh, fortunately, we don't feel like we're in any danger where we are right here in Moldova at this present time. Uh, but we would ask you to please pray that God would bring an end to this war and the suffering that's going on. There are uh, people who are, have shared with us some of the stories that they have gone through and some of the difficulties. So we would ask that you just be praying uh, for all the ministries that are happening here uh, in Hinchesh, Moldova, here at Maranatha Baptist Church. 
And so we sure appreciate all of you who pray for us. Please keep praying. And let me just take you around here just a little bit so you can see the other side of the auditorium. This is where we have our baptistry uh, built into our, our platform here. That'll get uh, covered over and then everything will get moved back up on the platform to be used uh, going forward. And we sure are excited about all the things that God is doing uh, here in Moldova. And so just to let you have a little bit of a look of how things look. And if you ever want to come for a visit, we'd love to have you here and to, to uh, see all the things uh, that God is doing here in the church planning work here in Moldova. And thank you again for praying for us from Emily and my three kids, Hannah, Josiah, and Tabitha, the Ford family in Moldova. We want to thank you for all you do for us. God bless. Amen. Amen. Well, that's an encouragement to see what God's doing over there. And... Uh, well, let's continue to pray for the Ford family and want to remind us about the uh, Bible study for the men on Monday, uh, Monday morning, Monday evening, uh, 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. And then um, uh, this coming Monday also is the ladies Bible study and they have a, they have a morning and an evening Bible study as well uh, monthly and that's 1130 and 630, 1130 and 630. So um, uh, it's a marvelous opportunity to dig into God's word, fellowship around God's truth. And uh, God and Country Day is a week from Sunday, a week from Sunday. Please, now that's, that is not a, that's not a holiday away from God. It, it really isn't. If there's ever a time that we need you to be in God's house, it's then. And uh, invite someone to come as your guest. Tell them you'll feed them. <laughs> uh, they'll, they'll have a great time. Uh, we'll have the, the pulled chicken, pulled pork, and, and all the fixings. We'll have your pies, ladies. We'll have your pies. And uh, just, just bring whatever pie you, you feel led to, to do. I think we're going to have the little ice creams, little ice cream. Because what's good pie without, without a little cup of ice cream, a little dip of ice cream? So um, uh, that, that will help uh, finish off the meal. We'll have a great time together. And uh, also, I've, uh, I've been very thankful how receptive uh, the invitations have, have uh, been received by our candidates and, and political officials, uh, government officials. And so I'm very thankful for that. We're at about how many, Miss Betsy? I'm sorry? 17 or 18 have confirmed that they're coming. They've called and they've confirmed that they're coming. And some have called and, and uh, sadly said, thank you for inviting me. I, I, we already have plans. I would like to be there. I talked with a judge. I talked with a judge on the phone for about 20, 25 minutes, uh, Judge Jim Clayton. And uh, just a delightful conversation, a uh, marvelous man, a uh, believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, born again. And uh, uh, he, he loves the Lord, and, and he said his wife... Um, they had they had special plans, and they hated that they could not come. And we talked for a good long while. And what a blessing uh, he has been to me already. And I look forward to getting to meet him another time. We'll try to have him back. But um, let me just say this. Uh, please pray for God's protective hand all over the country on the pregnancy crisis centers. Uh, these are places where young ladies are told that there's an alternative to, a, to abortion, that they can have, they can have the baby, and, and uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes adoption is the choice. Sometimes they, they raise the child, and, and uh, there's ways of help meeting the financial needs and diapers and all these kinds of things all through these centers. And, of course, the goal is to point them to the Lord Jesus Christ to see them saved. Uh, but they meet that immediate need and then, and then try to counsel with them about, about the Lord and salvation. And so this is, this is a marvelous uh, open door. Uh, please pray that God will protect uh, these places. And Satan wants them closed. He wants them shut down. He wants, he wants people to think that there's no hope. Uh, and out of desperation, murder an innocent little baby. Um, so uh, there's, they're saying that when this um, potential ruling, if this potential ruling comes down uh, to uh, overturn Roe v. Wade, that they're, they're saying that that evening would be a time to attack. And, but you know, God's angels 
are, are greater and mightier than any man and, uh, or, or armies of men or anything like that. So just pray and intercede, would you please? Um, we as a church, we as a church, we don't provide security, all right? That's not what we as a church are about. Um, we, we don't, we don't go and, and, uh, uh, into a strife and, and situations. We don't, we don't do that. We don't organize people to do that. And uh, so I, I want you to know that I'm thankful that we live in, in the United States of America. And I'm thankful that as a citizen in the United States of America, that there's a first amendment. I'm thankful that we have liberties and freedoms. I'm thankful that I can do as a citizen as within the law as I as I see fit and and uh, and for the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ not to bring any shame upon his name but I'm gonna be praying and I want you to pray and if you as a citizen want want to do something more just to show your presence or whatever that's between you God and the government and I praise God that we're in that kind of a country that we can do uh, those kinds of things but I just want to assure you that this is not something we do as a church as 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 a church trying to uh, uh, you know, do, do some kind of violence or, or whatever. That's not, that's not what we're called to do. Okay. So I want you to know that. And, um, uh, so anyway, um, I've, 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 I'm thankful that there are sources that I can go to. And I've spoken with some lawyers. I've spoken with a judge. I spoke, uh, I've received things back from, uh, three different uh, Christian law associations and all of them say, hey, yes, we're not, we're not fighting, you know, but, but we are in a spiritual struggle and uh, showing our support and giving our prayers and our presence. If, if God would lead you to do that, there's not a thing wrong with that. Not a thing wrong with that as God directs you as an individual. So God's directing me as an individual. God directs you as an individual. And, uh, and let's, let's see God's blessing. So, um, Pastor Jim, you're not having in July a, a, uh, a seniors fellowship, uh, uh, no, and, and no trip in July, but boy, you're going to hit it again this fall. Amen. All right. If you would come give those announcements and then lead us to the offering. Okay. Okay. Uh, we don't do anything in July. That's the way it was when I took over this, uh, ministry and that's the way it's always been so nothing in july and let me see if there's any first time visitors here first first time visitors i, I didn't see any as i looked around i guess not okay august the 9th august 9th we're going to the jacksonville zoo it's only fifty dollars that is El Chipo. We're going to eat at the Golden Corral. We're going to go see some of uh, somebody's kinfolks. <laughs> I don't know. You'll have, to, you'll have to figure that out for yourself. But then we're still going to the ark, and we're taking up money for the ark. It's $700. That's no more money. $700. Got 22 rooms in a hotel. 22. That's a lot of rooms. And you would think that those people would call you back. They still don't. I've called one lady three times, and she hadn't called me back this week at all. But that's okay. We have a standby. But we're going to the Ark, and we're going up to Nashville, and we're going to have a good time. That's $700. And that is going to be, uh, what is it, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th. Ark and thing. I believe that's what it is. But anyway, we'll have somebody here. We're going to be on vacation, but we'll have somebody here to take up the money and keep it for us, and we'll turn it in to uh, Miss Betsy uh, while we're gone. But we got 54 people wanting to go, and I think two dropped out this week already for different reasons. But if you want to go, we're not taking but those 40 people. So if you want to pay up, first come, first serve. Thank you. Amen. Offering for prayer. Forgot all about it.
Too much for an old man to think about all that stuff. I didn't write it down, that's why. Well, let's thank the Lord. And ushers, you come forward. If I don't see any out there, but I guess they are here. Oh, one's getting up. That's good. We're not going to get a lot of songbooks that way, are we? <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for a good day. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for the offering. I pray you bless it, multiply it. And God, forgive us where we fall short. Provide every need and help those people who are in dire need right now that we've been visiting all week and things that's going on uh, physically, mentally, and uh, God, you help them. In Jesus' name, bless this offering. Amen. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Get your Bibles ready. In just a moment, we'll look in the book of Nahum. Nahum. You might need some extra time to find it. Okay? And uh, the book of Nahum. Little three-chapter book and with a powerful message. Before we, before we do that, Hope's going to come and sing. And uh, I want you to listen to the message of the song. God's been good. God's been good. Lately I've been looking back along this winding road To the old familiar markers of the mercies I have known I know it may sound simple, but it's more than a cliche There's no other way to say it than this night. Though I've had my share of hard times by my side, he's always stood, cause through it all replay and I can see I've cried some bitter tears and I felt his arms around me as I faced my darkest fears I've had more gains and losses I've known more joy than hurt as his grace rolled down upon me undeserved God When I go to sleep each night Though I've had my share of hard times By my side, he's always stood Cause through it all, God's been good God has been my father, my savior, and my friend His love was mine Is this God being good? In my life, I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my 
share of hard times by my side he's always stood cause through it all God's been good in my life I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep each night though I've had share of hard times by my side he's always stood cause through it all Hope, Nahum, Nahum. When, uh, when we lived in West Virginia, I had the privilege of our backyard adjoining to my grandparents' backyard. I lived in the backyard of my grandparents. And my grandfather had, had pastored over 60 years. Um, he had pastored different churches. He was a circuit riding preacher for, for many years, and back in the day when there weren't a lot of pastors available, he pastored several churches at once, and uh, it was just a marvelous source of experience. I could sit down with my grandfather, and I would say, Papa, what would you do about this and such? You see, it was the first time I'd pastored when I went to West Virginia. Pastored there for 10 years. I'd been in the ministry uh, for many years before that, but never pastoring. And I had the privilege. God worked it out. I mean, God spoiled me rotten. You see, I knew that my grandfather loved me and knew me. I know that my grandfather loved God and knew God's people there at that church. And he had pastored that church years ago. And so I could go and seek good godly counsel. And uh, he was a man of few words, but you better hang on every word because they were powerful and they were wonderful. And I remember one time I went to him about something else, and, and uh, I, I just presented to him. He was always, you know, kind and, and, and patient, and he would listen and all these kinds of things. And some people thought that, that his goodness was just, you know, all that there was about him. But I went to him about something, and I just shared my heart about it. He said, he looked at me and he said, I'll take care of that. I said, oh, okay. And buddy, he took care of it. I mean, it was something, it wasn't, wasn't uh, you know, just right. It wasn't good. It wasn't justice and things. And, and it was in, within his realm to speak to that. And he did. And buddy, he took care of it. Let me tell you something. Uh, my, my grandfather was a man of love, but my grandfather also knew uh, what it meant to take a stand and for righteousness. And what we just heard a few moments ago, God's been good. This is half of the theme of the book of Nahum. If you're jotting down a, a title, jot this down for this message here in the time we have remaining. The goodness and justice of God. The goodness and justice of God. We're going to read three verses. If you'll look, please, in Nahum chapter 1, verse 7, if you'll uh, join me in standing in reverence to the Word of God, and if you're able to, look at verse 7, and, and we'll read verse 7, 8, and 9. The Lord is good. Boy, I tell you, if we could, if, if we could just preach right there those four words, the Lord is good, we could give testimony to that, couldn't we? The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. Boy, we could give testimony about that, couldn't we? And he knoweth them that trust in him. Verse 8, but with an overrunning flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemies. What do ye imagine against the Lord? He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not rise up for the second time. Thank you. you. May be seated. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your precious word. 
And Lord, I thank you that you are good. I thank you that you are just and righteous. And Lord, I pray now that you would help us to have a balanced look at you here today and, and in the book of Nahum. And Lord, I pray this so that you would that you will guide us and speak to our hearts in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You remember we studied the book of Jonah and how Jonah was not necessarily uh, that much of a prophecy, a, a book of prophecy looking to way into the future as much as it was something about uh, what God had planned for Nineveh and how that God's grace was seen in the lives of the folks in Nineveh from the king on down. And this, the, the Ninevites, this is the capital city of Assyria, the greatest kingdom of that day, uh, probably of, of all time up to that point. And it was a very large city. They say that, uh, that, that this city had 1,500 towers on the wall, 1,500 towers on the wall. It's, it's just an amazing, uh, huge city. Uh, we, we described it as, as a... Uh, a portion of the city of Orlando, a huge place. And we would think sometimes that God is active in God's people, in God's nation, the Jews, and that he just lets the Gentile nations go and do as they, as you know, he's not really over them. God is over the entire world, the nations of the world. He is... He's sovereign. He's the ruler of heaven and earth. Now, what happened was, yes, the Ninevites, they, they repented in sackcloth and ashes. They fasted. They prayed. They asked God uh, that, that he would not destroy them and all that kind of thing. Guess what? 120 years passed. 120 years, and God's judgment was withheld. But in that 120 years basically three generations, in that 120 years, you have them sliding away and turning away from God. And the Assyrian character, their, their behavior, their, their, their nature came back. These were a brutal people, a mean people. Whenever they would be moving as an army and, and, and conquering and all of that, if there was, if there was a, a, a town if there was a city in their path and they heard that the Assyrians were coming, it was not uncommon, history bears this out, it was not uncommon for a whole city, for a whole village, for a whole town to commit suicide instead of being uh, falling into the hands of the Assyrians. The kind of brutal torture uh, and brutal death that they brought, by the way, they invented crucifixion, the Assyrians did. Uh, they would bury someone up to the chin uh, in, in the desert, and then they would, they would do something uh, terribly unspeakable in, in their mouth, and they would leave them to die, and they would go insane before they, before they would die, or to the elements or to the animals. It was just a terrible thing, and, and we could go on and on about how brutal and how bloody these people were. And, and God said, enough's enough. But God used the Assyrians to whoop, to chastise his own people, the northern kingdom, uh, the ten tribes of Israel. He used the Assyrians to whoop them. And you know, God sometimes uses this world to get his people's attention. And God was good in that, to draw them back to himself. And it was a measured amount of time, the goodness and the justice of God. But here in the book of Nahum, God tells Nahum, you prophesy that enough is enough, that they have crossed that line, so to speak. Uh, the people in, in Genesis chapter 6, we find that uh, there, came, there came a day when God said, enough's enough, and he destroyed the world with water. Well, this was the case with uh, the Assyrians, and the capital city was the epicenter, that was the target. Uh, they, they were uh, well protected. They were there beside the Tigris River. They had water source and all of that. The, the, uh, uh, the city and the walls and all that were, were up above that water line. The Bible says, look, look, look me at verse number three. 
Nahum 1, verse 3, the Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry, drieth up all the rivers. Bashan languisheth in Carmel and the, the, the flower of Lebanon languisheth. You say, what does that mean? I understand about the, about the whirlwind, tornadoes and all that. All that's at his disposal, the arsenal of Almighty God. Uh, yeah, he can bring the storms. He can also hold back the water. And that's what verse number four is talking about. He can bring famine. Uh, verse five, look at it. Uh, the mountains quake at him. He can bring earthquakes. The hills melt. What's that, what's that talking about? It's talking about volcanoes. The hills m melt and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwelt therein. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can stand against earthquakes? Who can stand against tornadoes? Who can stand against volcanoes? Who can stand against famine where, where food won't grow? And he names some of those fertile areas there where the, the breadbasket of the Middle East. Who can stand against God in those, in those things? Um, and, and, then we, and then we read, we reminded the Lord is good. If I had a glass of water here was, and we poured halfway up the glass, um, is that glass half full? Yes. Is that glass half empty? Yes. What makes a difference? Your perspective. Your perspective. And what makes a difference between the goodness of God and the justice of God? What makes a difference between the two? It's our response to God in our life. That's what makes the difference. You see, we read it in verse 7, the Lord is good. Uh, he, he's a stronghold in the day of trouble. If you are following the Lord, you have omnipotence at your back. If you are obeying the Lord and, and obeying his word and, and seeking to please him, and you've invited Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, and, and, and you're saying, yes, Lord, I want to please you in my life. I, I, I'm telling you today, the Lord is good and the, and the glass is half full. But if you say, God, I, I've got my life. I don't really need you. You're, you're kind of a bother. You, you restrict me, to be honest with you. There's some things I want to do in this world and some fun I want to have, but according to what the Bible says, I shouldn't do it. I just, I might get around to that later, but God, I want to do my own thing. And there are three generations of that that took place in Assyria, and God said, enough's enough. Skip down to verse 14. The end of the verse, it says, I will make thy grave, for thou art vile. What does that mean, I will make thy grave? He says, I'm going to bury you. He says to a city, he says to an empire, and if necessary, he says to an individual. You see, the Bible tells us in Galatians 6, 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you're jotting down uh, some, some points, jot this down. Number one, no one can stop God's power. No one can stop God's power. We see this in, in chapter number one. And on the positive side, no one can stop God's power to save. I mean, who would think that Saul of Tarsus would come to Jesus Christ and be saved? Who would think he'd become an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ after standing there cheering on uh, the, the folks that are stoning Stephen? Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought that Mel Trotter, a lifelong alcoholic, that walked up to his own little baby's casket, and when no one was looking, reached in the casket and, and slipped off the little shoes off his own baby's feet, stuffed them in his coat pocket, and took those shoes and pawned those shoes for a little bit of money so he could buy a little bit more alcohol. Who'd have thought that someone like Mel Trotter would be gloriously saved and turn to a, a preacher of, of the Word of God and see hundreds and thousands of people saved? Who'd have thought that God could do that? The power of God to save is unstoppable. You can't stop God's power. Hey, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that no one is too hard. After all, the whole city of Nineveh repented. But there came a generation did not know the name Jonah, did not understand and recognize the name Jehovah God. And then God said, all right, it's over. That line of grace had been crossed. 
So for them, the glass is half empty. No one can stop God's power. Number two, uh, no one is beyond God's reach. Look at chapter 2, please. Look at chapter 2. Uh, I'm, just for the sake of time, I'm going to point out a few little verses here. Look at verse 4. The chariots shall rage in the streets. They shall jostle one against another in the broad ways. They shall seem like torches. They shall run like the lightnings. Um, you know, folks, be careful about uh, uh, prophecy teachers. Sometimes they try to force things into the Word of God that's, that's not there. Um, there. There are some people that actually have, have said this is a prophecy about automobiles. <laughs> about cars and things. When, when point in truth, what actually it was, the Assyrians, they, had, uh, they were the general motors, if you will, of chariots. Uh, they, they used these. If you, if you look at any of the Assyrian, um, uh, well, it's not hieroglyphics, but it's on the wall uh, where, where they would carve things into the wall. Uh, you, you always see them riding in a chariot, sometimes with a spear, sometimes with a bow, an arrow, and they're riding in a chariot, and, and uh, they were fast. And what happened was, whenever the, the judgment of God fell, and I'll tell you how it happened just in just a moment, when the judgment of God fell, and the Medes and the Babylonians gathered together against the Assyrians, and they destroyed Nineveh, wiped them out, there was in the streets, in the highways, and, and, and all that kind of thing, there, there were these battles going on uh, amongst the chariots. Now, if you've been to museums or maybe seen some, uh, some old, old films, uh, you've, you've, you've probably seen where they took blades and they put them on the hubs of their chariot wheels. And the idea was if they got close enough to the chariot next to them, that those, those, it, would, it would work like a, a buzz saw, and, and it, would, it would bust up the wheel of the chariot next to them. That's what he's saying. He said, this, it, it's, it's going to be, the chariot shall rage in the streets. Could you imagine as, there, as this is going on, uh, this, this, this battle? Look at, look at verse number 6. The gates of the river shall be opened, and the palace shall be dissolved. Uh, I give you this, this uh, name. Diodorus Siculus, he was a Greek historian, and he writes how that Nineveh had those, had those 1,500 towers and all that. Each of them were 200 feet high, 200 feet high. The city was impregnable, except for this. Whenever the Babylonians and the Medes came and they were going to surround the city and, and besiege the city and, and try to somehow to, to breach these mighty, huge walls that they had built. And this would usually take months, sometimes years. <laughs> well, they didn't count on the fact that, that God was in charge. He sent great storms of rain, and that Tigris River grew and, and uh, uh, got in flood stage. It wore away the foundation of that wall, and, and a whole section of that wall crumbled, and here they went right into the city. They thought that they were unreachable. They thought that they were untouchable. You know, individuals today can think that. Nations can think that. Uh, uh, families can think that, that they're untouchable by God. Listen, please. God can get our attention in a heartbeat, literally, literally. God can get our attention in many ways that we would never, never see. And here, this is a, this is a prophecy of that. Um, in, in the next verse, verse 7, and huzzab, uh, that word actually means, it's, it's transliterated, and it actually means it is decreed. <laughs> it is decreed. Um, that, that should be led away captive and shall be brought up, and her maid shall lead her as with the voice of doves tabering upon their breasts. It, it's, it's like doves whenever, uh, if, if you're dove hunting or something like this. I, I've read about this. I've never gone dove hunting. Uh, just doesn't, I don't know, just doesn't seem competitive or sporty uh, to go dove hunting. Uh, if that's your thing, I'm sorry. But, um, but when, whenever they... Uh, whenever they sense that there's danger and they all take off and, and, and they're, they're flapping their wings, it's, it's the noise of that. It's like, it's like they're beating their chest as they're, as they're flying away. Here's what happened. They were flying away to get out of this, 
this danger. Verse 8 says, but Nineveh is of old like a pool of water. I mean, he's looking ahead in, with the eyes of God. God's giving him a vision, and he's seeing Nineveh surrounded and inundated with water. Um, it says, yet they, um, yet they shall, uh, middle of verse 8, yet they shall flee away. Stand, stand, shall they cry, but none shall look back. Hear these great, vicious, brutal, mean people. They'll be running for their lives. Verse 10, she is empty and void and waste, and the heart melteth, and the knees smite together, and much pain is in all loins, and the faces of them all gather blackness. No one can stop God's power. No one is beyond God's reach. No one. We find in chapter 3, in chapter 3, verse 1, The third, the third point, God's word is final. Woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. The noise of a whip and the noise of the rattling of the wheels and of the prancing horses and of the jumping chariots. Uh, he's seeing this in his, in his mind's eye. The Holy Spirit has revealed this. You say, did, did God actually show people in advance what's going to happen? That's what he did with prophets. It's like they got a preview. They got a glimpse of the future. And he said it was it, to, to hear the, the, the whip of the driver of the chariot and, and the horses and the wheels and, and, and all that's going on. These were the tanks of that day. Very hard to stop. Um, verse 3, the horsemen lifted up both the bright sword and the glittering spear, and there's a multitude of slain and a great number of carcasses. Could you imagine uh, the, the none end of their corpse, uh, their, the, the corpses? They stumble upon their corpses. And so they're going along and, and, and with, with the chariot and the horse and all that, and they're just running over dead people, running over dead people. In fact, here's what took place. They so annihilated the city of Nineveh and the Assyrian Empire that it disappeared. It was not found until 1850. 1850, they unearthed some of the walls that were left of Nineveh. That's, that's not too long ago. 170 years ago, was the first time that Nineveh was ever heard of ever again, never rebuilt. God's word was final. Now, listen to me. The good thing, the half full and half empty glass, remember this, God's word is final. Jesus said in John chapter 10, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Let me tell you something. The, the, the glass half full says, God's word is final, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God's word is final. Which side of God are you on? Nineveh was on the side against God. Notice uh, as, as I close, notice verse 13 of chapter 2, the last verse of chapter 2. Say the, the first uh, five words with me. Behold, I am against thee. Skip down to verse 5. Behold, I'm, 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 I'm chapter 3. Behold, I am against thee. That's, that's the only time except for one other time that God said that in the Word of God. That he was against them. Now, most of the time, we, we would like to think that God's for us, okay? But there came a time in, in the life of Nineveh that God says, I'm against thee. The only other time we find is Ezekiel 38 and 39 about Gog and Magog that he says, I'm against thee. And Gog and Magog is modern Russia. Modern Russia did not exist when Ezekiel gave his prophecy. It didn't even exist 
But God showed Ezekiel what he was going to do to a people. By the way, they had the gospel in Russia before we had the gospel. And they have turned their face as a nation away from God and to atheism. And God said, I'm going to destroy you. And that's still future. That's still future. God's word is final. Verse 19 is uh, the last verse we'll read of chapter 3. The last verse of Nahum. There is no healing of thy bruise. Thy wound is grievous. All that hear the brute of thee shall clap the hands over thee. For upon whom hath not thy wickedness passed continually? The specifics are unmistakable. God said the palace would be dissolved. The palace of Nineveh, that flood came in, flooded the whole area, flooded the foundation of the palace, it fell apart. It was amazing how literal and how accurate Nahum, this little known book, Nahum. Let me tell you something. Every promise God will keep. Which side of God are you on? I'll tell you, I want to be on his good side, the goodness of God, not on the side of God's justice. Because you see, if he ceases to be just, he ceases to be good. And God has promised that he will judge sin. God has promised he will bring every evil act into judgment one day. So when you look at this evil world and you say, how in the world could all this happen and people get away with it? They're not getting away with it. Nineveh didn't get away with it. No one will get away with it. No one is beyond his reach. Nothing is too hard. He's unstoppable. Nothing is too hard for God. And God's word is final. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that we would be thankful that we're on the side of the glass that's half full. Lord, not because we're special. Lord, not because we deserve it, because we don't. But Lord, someone came and told us the good news that Jesus died for sinners. And Lord, there was a day in our life that we asked Jesus to forgive us and to cleanse us and to come in our heart and life and save us. And Lord, just like Nineveh, three generations before, they received your grace. But Lord, there came a day that your justice fell upon Nineveh. I pray for our nation. I pray for our leaders. And I ask you, dear God, that you would... Shower your grace upon us. Give space for repentance. And Lord, I pray that you would help there to be some Jonas of our day, to be preachers of righteousness, thundering your power and sharing your love. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, today it's not too late to receive Christ as your Savior. Tomorrow it might be for you. Tomorrow you might be in a car accident. Tomorrow you might be in a hospital. Tomorrow there might be something take place that you could never imagine. But today is the day of salvation. Would you invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today? Would you come to the place that you're sick of your sin and repent and turn to him? In the stillness of this moment, whether you're here in a, in a seat in the auditorium, whether you're watching by way of live stream, would you humble your heart and bow your head and ask Jesus to save you today? You could pray something like this, dear Lord Jesus, I don't deserve to go to heaven. I'm a sinner and I confess that to you. I believe you died on the cross for me. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'd forgive me of all my sin. I repent and come to you as my only hope of salvation. Come into my heart and my life and save my soul. 
Help me to live for you as a Christian. Thank you for saving me. And help me not to be ashamed of you. In your wonderful name I pray. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Would you make that decision real? Don't you leave this place without telling someone that you've received Christ as your Savior. Say, do I have to do that to go to heaven? No, you have to do that because you're going to heaven. You should want to do that. Boy, I, I've, I've doubted this, but tonight I settled it by God's promise. There's nothing too hard for him. He'll take me to heaven when I die. Tell somebody, share God's goodness. If you're by way of live stream, you let someone know. You call us, you tell somebody, a loved one. Lord Jesus, I pray now that you'll help us to serve you, walk with you humbly. And Lord, I pray for our nation. I pray, God, that we would humble ourselves before thee. Lord, may it not take a catastrophe. May it not take the loss of innocent life. May it not take something horrible to get our attention. May we willingly bow the knee and humble ourselves and ask for your direction individually in our life. Churches, leaders, our government, and this whole nation. May it again become a beacon of your truth and the saving gospel of Jesus Christ, in whose name I pray, amen. Let's stand together, please. Thank you for being here this evening, and I trust that you'll be back here, bring someone with you on Sunday, and I'm thankful for the van ministry, and if you're involved in that, thank you so much for picking up boys and girls and uh, bringing them to the sound of the gospel. Any other announcements I need to make that I forgot? Any other announcements I need to make? All right, God bless you, folks. Have a great night. Amen.